and welcome to Talking Comics. We are here at the London Super Comic Con, the biggest Comic Con in the UK. And uh, we're surrounded by so many fans. There's a queue just to the right of me for Dan Slott, who's sitting here giving the old Spider-Man fingers and he's, the, the queue's going back a long, long way. We've got people all from around the country come here, especially for this one con. Uh, it's way, way bigger than last year, I can tell you, way bigger. And I can imagine that next year is going to be even bigger. So you guys, if you weren't here this year, you need to make sure that you come, and get, you know, come down here next year because it's going to be amazing. We are here at the LSCC with Dan Slot. Hello, Dan. Hi! Some people know him as the bringer of death, the Gabriel Angel for Peter Parker. Yes, I'm an evil and horrible human being. I have ruined your life. Um, why? We, we, you, no one's going to forgive me if I don't at least start with that question. Uh, just because. I had nothing better to do. Because you can. I can. <laughs> I knew it would hurt you. I drink your tears and made strong by them. Right. No, no, it, no. It just, it's something I really wanted to do. When you, when you think about Peter Parker, he is the ultimate underdog. He's the guy that he can lose. And it, it, it breaks my heart. All these people who read 700 who go, it was a cheap death, or it, it, was, it, it was a terrible thing to do to Peter Parker. Oh my God, you ruined his memory. No, this is the way Peter Parker is always meant to go, in that he's going to fight unbelievable odds, everyone's going to think he's a menace, and he dies knowing only he did the right thing. You know, the moment he gives Doc Ock all his memories and experiences and leaves the world, he takes an impossible situation and he finds some sliver of victory in it, and that he leaves the world a hero instead of a villain. What else could he have done, you know, when he got to that point? Um, Ah, I just, I love that story so much. Do you, do you feel like you've kind of come full circle? Because you took on uh, Spider-Man after the JMS run, mm -hmm. and he just had that kind of cosmic restart, let's call it. And, um, and then, you know, he's now come around to, I don't, I don't want to say dying again, but now, we, uh, it's, you know, he's disappeared, and he's kind of back in superior in its own weird way. No, no, no he's around. He's, he's like, a, a, you know. The friendly... Uh, I don't want to give too much away, can I? Yeah, no, people, if you haven't read it by now, you haven't read it by now. What are you doing? Where, you, where have you been? <laughs> Under a rock? Are you sleeping? You, you have, you know, some part of Peter Parker is still in there somewhere. He's still, you know, fighting his way through. Um, because, oh, I almost gave things away. No, oh, you're, you're going to have oh, to. Oh, oh, come on. You're going to have to. You're going to so have, well. you're gonna have to read Superior Spider Man number nine. Oh, uh, number nine. Number nine. It's coming up. It's a key issue. Very, it's a game changer. It's again? again. Uh, yes. Wow. Something really big happens in Superior 9. And let me tell you, like, sitting in the Marvel retreats, there are a lot of bigwigs at Marvel who went, what? No. <laughs> no. So, like, when even you get to a certain level of certain guys, when they're acting like fans, when they're going like, wait, you know, then you, you know you're in a good zone. You're onto something. Yeah. Um, so, now we've got Doc Ock in control. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I, I'm kind of interested about this kind of reflection he had with the Sinister Six. Mm -hmm. Why did you pit him against his old buddies? You know, the minute he decides to do good, inevitably he's going to have to fight guys that were his friends. We're going to see a lot more of this when Chris Yost is writing Avenging Spider-Man. You're going to see more of the Sinister Six being taken down by Doc Ock. And you're going to see the ramifications of that over in Avenging. Meanwhile, over in Superior, Things are moving forward. You're very conscious now of what you're saying. I can see in your eyes. Yes. No, I'm being very, very <laughs> cautious. I, I don't want to give anything away. No, good, good. We, weren't we good at keeping everything from 700 a secret? You know, you didn't see it coming. You did not see it coming. You so, went into hiding, actually. Yes, I did, for a couple weeks. Because I knew once Superior came out and people saw Peter, like, resurfacing, everyone would be like, huh. Well, was it true that you had security to protect you from crazy nutters? I cannot confirm nor deny that. Right, right, okay. <laughs> but they were, they, 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 you know, there was some, can you confirm that you did get something that was unappealing to you, letters that were sent that were not very nice, emails, etc. But yeah, it's, it's news. It's been on CNN. Yes. I'm not going to deny it. Exactly. There were death threats, yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> ridiculous. Woo. Yeah, I mean. Uh, oh, but what's really lovely is that um, all these people who've, uh, a lot of people who are really angry and really upset, um, 
when they send in a lot of fan mail now and, and messages and things, they go, I was really upset, now I'm on board. You know, like, yeah, I was so mad, but no, I like where it's going now. And it was the end of Superior Spider-Man number one, literally, right at the end of that. You, you oh. took people off and you brought people back in. And it wasn't even, they didn't even know, you know, it was like being smacked twice in the face, knockout. So many people are like, why? Why did it happen now? Why not wait 12 issues? Why not slowly seed it? And it's that aggravation that, that a new group of readers have, which is why you do it, because you didn't see it coming. You didn't think we were gonna do it. It's the elephant in the room. The minute you do this, every jaded comic book fan, every person who's read comics for 30, 40, 50 years, goes, oh, of course they're bringing Peter back. So boom, let's just turn over that card right now. Here you go. Here's Peter Parker trying to get his way back. Let's not pretend that we're gonna pull it out for 25 issues and then bring him back, it, 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 you know. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I just said, let's just turn over that card now. You know, don't say I don't try, guys. Don't say I don't try. <laughs> you're you're going to have to wait and see. Ah, okay. But I think we've done a good job of, of, of going against people's expectations. Yeah. And it's really weird when I see people go online and they, they guess where it's going. And then they start judging the book off of their guesses as if they're right. You're not right. You don't know what we're doing. We got some surprises. We got more tricks up our sleeves. Do you know, do you know what it is that I feel special about you, Dan, over a lot of other, and I don't mean that in a nice way. I mean, no, I no, do no. mean that in a nice no, way. No. I don't mean that in a, you know. No, you mean why everyone else special. is horrible. Yeah, well, Everyone's I, crap but me. No, come on. You know, you are the true comic book fan come good. That, okay, I, I get that and it's true, but I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Come on in. That is every comic book writer. They just hide it better. Uh, I have no poker face and I don't hide my fandom. Uh, I like, I let it out. I just go, yeah. But every single one of these guys, every, you know, everybody, Bendis, Brubaker, you know, Fraction, Hickman, they're all comic book fans. They just don't want you to know it, <laughs> you know. But you, well, you really are a comic book fan because we saw at uh, a con not long ago, we saw you, mm. you were all over the Doctor Who and the oh. Red Dwarf. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not being a comic book fan. That's just being a geek. That's a geek. And yeah, I... You're one of us. This is what I'm oh, saying, Dan. God, you yeah. are one of us. I'm, I am... You're a member of the tribe, dude. Err. <laughs> yeah, no, I... No, but we've all got our different things. And I've got places where, like in my fandom, where there are big gaping holes where people go like, he doesn't know a thing about that. No, but like when I'm really into something like Doctor Who or, or like Red Dwarf, or I'm, I'm super into it. I can quote all the episodes and... One, one line that describes, or a few words that describe the next five issues of Superior Spider-Man. The next five issues of Superior Spider-Man. One sentence, whatever you can do, just. Oh, um, you, oh, I got him. I got you him. only think you know. I like it. I like it. I like it. Very good. Thank you so much, Dan. We hope to see you again later on when it's calmed down and you've signed it five. It's never minutes. going to be calm. <laughs> Have you seen the line? It's crazy. They're mad. They want me there right now. I shouldn't be here talking to you. I think we're going to start getting rage if we. Yeah. Gonna... No, it's all good. But yay! Keep watching the channel. Cheers. Comic Con, how you doing, Rich? Frustrated and uh, flabbergasted at the amount of people are here. It's just been phenomenal. We've been open a few hours, and my God, there are tons of people here, which is really cool. So we're having a great time. I, I, I found it hard to get to your your stand. It was so rammed. It was. We've got a queue literally going around the block for Addy, Dan Slot, and Marco as well. So I think we did something right, but it was a case of you know we've had to usher people around and. Um, that's why I'm frustrated because we want to get people in and out, get stuff signed. But um, it's great. What a great, what a great crowd as well. Everybody's happy. The Guardians of the Galaxy uh, variant cover was announced today by by you guys. It was. Yeah, it was. So we've got the flies out there, and we've got loads of pre-orders already. It's been great. So really cool. And Addy's done the um, cover as again. Oh yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to stick with Addy's. Is the the coolest cover artist out there, I think. And obviously, Midtown got their Jason Campbell covers, which we love as well. Um, but Addy, my word, it's yeah, phenomenal stuff, really good. So, so we're going to expect some more variant covers from you guys. We are, yeah, we're going to do an X Men one, um, which what? hasn't, yeah, hasn't been hasn't been signed yet. We haven't signed up with Marvel, but what they said yeah, it's okay to, to go 
um, which will be for a charity, which is going to be good fun. Um, right, and we announced that on the show. We did, yeah, yeah. which is cool. And then we've, yeah, we'll see how it, how it goes this year. Hello, and welcome to Talking Comics. We're here at the LSCC with John Wagner. Uh, well, how do I even start? Judge Dread Legend. What, what do you feel about the impression that they're giving at the moment that he may be uh, gay? Uh, I'm not happy about that at all. I don't think his sexuality ought to come into anything. So. Um, I, I mean, the book was very much a political response rather than, you know, these kind of... They're, they're like trying to force other aspects into the character. Do you feel that... Do you I think they used it for publicity when they shouldn't have. I mean, it's to me, it's no part of Dredd's character. He is asexual to me. Um, how did you feel about the movie that came out? I loved it. I thought it was really good. I thought um, they didn't make the mistake of trying to do too much. Uh, they had a fairly limited budget and so they focused on one aspect of Dredd's life and uh, I think it worked really well. Uh, one of the things most fans say is they say it stayed true to the comic. Do you feel that, that was the case? Yeah, I do. I, I think that's, that was its biggest asset. It was true to Dredd unlike the first film which really in the end didn't have anything to do with Dredd. Um, obviously, the, he has a real life time span. What age would you have him die? I mean, he can't go on forever, so or how would you feel they could circumvent that? Well, uh, I have two answers to that. The first one is that in the 22nd century, 70 is the new 40. And the second answer to that is by the time it becomes necessary to decide, I'll be dead. <laughs> you just blow me away, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is probably the best answer I have ever, ever heard, ever. I don't spend a lot of time worrying about it, and you'll understand why. <laughs> Where do I go from there? Where do I go from there? Okay. Listen, John, I hope you live forever, but would you like the character to die when you pass. Uh, I would like to write his death scene oh, wow. and I did suggest this about a month ago to the editor and uh, let's say his attitude was rather negative. <laughs> because that's a very important character to them obviously. Oh yeah, so Alex Garland, the writer of the film, suggested that I should write the script and leave it with my will. But I think that's, that's where it would stay because Rebellion are never going to kill Dread. There's always an alternate universe though. There is, I've thought of that too, but I think it would be a bit of a cheat. Okay. L listen, John, it's an absolute honour and a pleasure to be having a conversation with you. I hope you come down to see us in London one more time. If not... Before I die. <laughs> pre preferably before Dread goes. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you so much again. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. So we're back once again at the LSCC. Hello, and everybody. I'm with Zach. Hello. Nice to see you again. And uh, how's it been? Mental. Yeah? Mental. Mental. It has been blinded. It has been brilliant. It knocks last year out of the water completely. You've been working uh, really hard. I know. It makes change, doesn't it? Why is that? Our variant. Our variant. I mean, all day long. I mean, the doors opened this morning. People came rushing in just like, bye, 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 bye. We've been non-stop. We've been absolutely non-stop. I think they're going to they're gonna go, aren't they? There won't be anything left. Well, from the... We brought about 1,200 with us and we're down to half a comic books. Oh, God. So that, that's it. And we're done. We're gone. So li like literally, if they don't pick it up ASAP, then it's gone. It's gone. It's over. It's over. Um, but th don't worry, we've got more variants coming out. Did you hear the news? I did. I saw the Guardians cover. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? It does. It looks lovely. We're taking pre-orders for that now as well, at the com. Have you managed to uh, get out and see anybody this time? Because uh, last time you told me, oh no, I was working too hard, I didn't get to see anybody. <laughs> I saw the lotto. Oh, did you? That is it. I've got my Secret Wars hardcover signed, and I've got, I bought one of his sketchbooks, which is lovely. If you get a chance, get a sketchbook. Get his sketchbook. But um, that's it. So you, you, probably, you probably geeked out? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little geekgasm. <laughs> um, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much. And uh, we thank you so much for uh, putting up with us for the last six months. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to another six months of Zach. What, what have we got to look forward to? What can we expect? Uh, more Zach, more Rally, more hatred, more love. It's, it's all going to be there. It's all going to be Love for the comics, hatred for each other. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, Zach, and we'll speak to you again soon. All right, thank you very much. Take care.